Father, we bless your name this morning. We give you praise for the 14th day of glory. Thank you for the gift of life and health. We appreciate you for everything you have done for us. We commit once again our lives, ourselves to you this morning as we journey. Please grant us help in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome us again this day for what God has planned for us on this 14th day of glory. Those online, those on site, uh, I want us to note that these days are not common days. They are special days of God's work, preparing us for what He has for us in this new year and as the instructions are coming i want us to be take them very seriously for example yesterday the lord began to speak to us on sowing by divine guidance sowing by divine guidance we saw how the lord led isaac to sow in the year of famine and he blessed the work of his hand and you will notice that just like we pointed out yesterday that after that particular year isaac never sowed again he, he never went back to farming he continued you know the rearing of cattle the animal husbandry he was with and when it was time for his children to take over from him jacob took over because that was the occupation of abraham isaac inherited it and then jacob took took over from him and then while Esau went into hunting they were never farmers you know why because god called them to sojourn in the land he said i will give you this land so they are to move from one place to another you know the, the bible said they were dwelling in tents so they, could, they couldn't start renting land or buying land to cultivate. It was just that year the Lord said, you need to tilt a bit so that you'll be able to survive this year of famine. So we must pay attention to the instructions that the Lord is going, giving to us if we are going to succeed in our work with him, especially in these last days. We are in the very end of the age. We saw that there are three internal enemies that fight against our sowing, even when God has granted us direction on the location of where to sow and the way to sow. We saw number one, small heart. Small heart. That we need to plead with God to enlarge our heart. The Bible said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Though he was born in sorrow, and the mother laid a curse on him when he, wa he was born. But when Jabez noticed that things were not moving the way he, 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 he expects, he began to pray. He called upon the name of the Lord and said to God, Oh, that you will bless me indeed. And that you will enlarge my coast. And that your hand will be with me. And that you will protect me from all evil. That it will not hurt me. And the Lord granted him his request. He called upon the Lord. And the Lord answered him. And I pray that as we call upon the Lord in these days. The Lord will surely grant our request. His heart was enlarged. The Lord blessed him as he sowed, he prospered, and he became more honorable. Remember that glory means honor. Another word for glory is honor. Jabez was moved from shame to glory, from poverty to wealth. He became an honorable person because the Lord blessed him and enlarged his coast. 
Solomon became the richest man. The most you know, wealthy of his generation because the Bible said in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 to 31, the Lord did not just give Solomon wisdom and understanding. He also gave him largeness of heart. Largeness of heart. And, you know, the largeness of heart, say it was like the sand upon the seashore. I read Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13. Solomon said, I, I, I the preacher, I, I, I began to search. My heart was seeking and searching out every work that was done on, on the earth. That is, you know what that means? He became a researcher that was researching not only in uh, maybe one field of knowledge, in every field. He, you know, a researcher is a reader. And listen, I was thinking that that was what the Lord will allow us to deal with today. Developing capacity for bountiful sowing. That was what I was thinking. But when I was praying, the Lord said, no, today we are going to look at winning battles by divine guidance. Winning battles by divine guidance. But I think he may allow me to touch the fact that if we must sow bountifully, if we must have a large heart, it is not just God give us, give me a large heart. We have a role to play. We, need, we, we, we can do something to develop our capacity by increasing our knowledge. Knowledge is capacity. What you don't know is you cannot be able to get into it. Are, are you getting me? Yes, you are in the ministry. What do you know about ministry? Your capacity in ministry will be determined by your knowledge. First of all, your knowledge. You are in business. What do you know about business? The kind of business you are doing. What do you know about it? What have you read? Have you read about people who have done that, this kind of business before? How they succeeded? How they failed? Your knowledge is your capacity. Is a very essential factor of capacity. So the, the more you know, the larger your heart in the matter you are, you are into. Though no, everything is not about knowledge, but knowledge is a fundamental key there. You must get knowledge. Is it not when you have knowledge that you can apply knowledge and it becomes wisdom? Are you getting it? So you have to, if you are really interested in God, enlarge my heart so that I will not end small because you can never be, be great if you don't have a large heart. You can never be big if your heart is small. No, it's a law. It's both spiritual and physical. When you see a physical unbeliever businessman doing great things, let me tell you what has happened to him. The first thing is that he has enlarged his heart. His heart is large. His heart is large. Those who are doing small, small businesses, the problem is that their heart is small. If you want to push them into big business and give them money, they will turn back. You know the way you stretch a rubber? If you stretch the rubber, when you leave the rubber, what happens? It returns back to its normal because this is the size of the rubber. Under normal circumstances. I, are you getting it now? So, I want to... That's not part of uh, the topic today, but please, try to read and study and get spiritual knowledge. Also get intellectual knowledge. That is, try to, to know things around the things that God has called you to do. The area. Get... Okay, if God has called you to do poetry, and poetry is the business, what do you know about poetry business? Maybe what you know about poetry business is rearing a poetry of um, uh, maybe 100 fowls, and then by this Christmas you sell it and make gain. You wait for Easter season. That's all you know. Are you aware that there are poetry industry? And there are, I mean, as, as big as hectares of land. And you see construction. You see, you see massive number of workers working there alone. Just poultry farm. Only poultry. Come and see eggs that are coming out of the farm. Come and see the kind of meat, the kind of thing that are coming out of the farm. It's so massive. You can't move from this little thing you are doing to that kind of thing if you are not well, you know, educated. You are not knowledgeable in that area. So sometimes knowledge comes by reading, but not only reading. Training. Training. You can go for training. 
enrolled for training in the area you know that you are you are called to sow when you get trained you will do better your heart is enlarged your capacity is enlarged and you'll be able to do better and then we saw another enemy internal enemy laziness i pray that god has delivered us and will deliver us from every form of laziness that scripture is still coming to my mind he said the slot for the lazy said there is lion in the street he's still on the bed though, turning uh, from one side of the bed to another and he said there's the lion yes i'm sure there is the lion how do you how are you sure <laughs> eh? how did you become so sure that there is lion in the street maybe somebody is asking why are you still here you you not gonna go to work today he said have you not heard that there's lion in the street he said are you sure i'm sure that there is lion I mean, just trying to find excuse why you should not go out. Oh my God. And the sower went out to sow. Went out to sow his seed. I am going out this year to sow my seed. I'm going out of my comfort zone. I'm going out of all, all, all hindrances to sow my seed. There is a seed that God has given to me. I don't know about you. The sower went out to sow his seed. You can't sow your seed in your house. You can't sow your seed in the yard. You must go out. Whether you are a farmer or you are a businessman, some of you will have to travel out. Some of you businessmen that are listening to me, you must travel out of Nigeria to countries like China, to countries like India, where you will make transactions and come back, make connections and come back and expand your business. You must go out of your comfort zone laziness can never you know be part of what we will condone if we are going to um sow our bountiful seed by divine guidance we must fight it like the greatest enemy and then another internal enemy is fear fear this fear i don't want us to take it for granted because it's it's, it's it has multifaceted you know dimensions we talked about fear of men fear of meeting people you are afraid of meeting people you are shy you are ashamed you can never succeed in anything you are doing on earth without meeting people the earth is ruled by people god said the heavens even the heavens belong to me psalm 115 verse 16 but the earth i have given to the children of men so if you want to do any transaction on the earth spiritual physical ministerial business anything it is the children of men you must be ready and be excited to meet children of men everywhere are you getting it at all are you getting it yes you must not be shy you must not be afraid of children of men because the earth has been given to them you went to abia state there are some schools you went there that are given to children of men you have to consult them and say i'm here in your territory because i want to sow here are you getting me Children of men are in charge of territories. God gave it to them. So you have to talk with them. You have to consult them. You have to transact with them before you can expand what God is asking you to do. You expand it by meeting children of men. Then you talk about fear of rejection. What if I meet him now and he rejects me? If he rejects you, another person will accept you. If this place rejects you, go to another place. You don't fear rejection and then you, you, you will not be able to do what you are supposed to do. If this door closes, another one is opening. If this fellowship says no, another fellowship is saying yes, we, are, we need you. Are you getting me? Very, very serious. Fear of failure. You have to fail some, sometimes so that you will learn how to succeed. So you don't fear failure. Fear of the unknown. I was asking somebody yesterday after the meeting, which, which of this fear is your? He said fear of the unknown. That's his major problem. When you want to do something, he's afraid of the unknown. I don't know what will happen. Hmm. Then fear of accidents, fear of death, fear of accidents. Eh? When you want to travel to go and do something, something is telling you, what if you have accidents? When pe business people are going every day, drivers, are there not drivers that are on the road day and night? That is their job. They will drive for 40 years, 50 years, and they, they will not have accidents. And you are just to make a journey, you are afraid of accidents. If you are afraid of plane crash, are you not aware that some people are walking in the plane as, you know, at, <laughs> they will follow the plane, go, follow the plane, come back, follow the plane, go again. Follow, uh -uh. 
are you getting me? And you I will enter once in, in three months or once in one year. You are afraid. When somebody is following it every day. All the fear in your heart about moving forward in sowing your seed this year. They are dead. They are cast out in the name of Jesus. Fear of persecution. Fear of persecution. Jesus said you must be persecuted. The devil will raise opposition against you. And then fear of Satan and his demons. This is where we are starting now. Because Satan is the external enemy. Uh, when you overcome internal enemy, then you face him as you go out to sow. The Bible said, be sober, be vigilant for our adversary, the devil. Our adversary. Somebody is our enemy. Our adversary. First Peter 5 verse 8. Ephesians 6 verse 12. He said, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. But against principalities and power. He said, for we wrestle. We wrestle. So there is a wrestling that is going on between us and principalities and powers. And spiritual wickedness in high place. He didn't say principality. Principalities. Are you hearing me? Read your Bible carefully. We wrestle against principalities. So when you conquer one principality, another one will come up and say, eh, I want to wrestle with you too. Powers, not power. Spiritual wickedness in high place. World rulers, not ruler, of this present darkness. These are external enemies that we must fight. Life is a battle. Life itself is a battle. I'm telling you. Do you know that even for the unbelievers, life is a battle too? Yes. There is a, a force of life devil is wicked he enjoys you know causing people to to be poor to be in sorrow to to that is what he enjoys he's happy when people are poor when they are in debt when they are sorrowful except you will come and covenant with him and he will use you as an agent that's when he will leave you alone if you are not with him he will be fighting you whether you are unbeliever or believer well, every unbeliever is with him, but some of them, they don't want to realize that. So, but for the believers, life is a battle. Life is, somebody said, life is not a, uh, I think it was Bishop Oyedebo that said, life is not a, a, a fun fair. It is a warfare. Now, when, if you talk about life as a warfare, you now talk about ministry. What is, the, what is ministry now? <laughs> you know, when, when normal life of a... The day you say, I am born again, I'm a child of God, the devil draw a battle line. Just because you say, I'm born again, he will want to fight you. Now, you are now trying to, you know, win souls and do you know what it means to, to win souls? To make a disciple. You are making an adventure into a kingdom. And this kingdom has a king. So you have to bind. Jesus said, you don't go to a strong man's house and carry his goods away. And he's referring to human beings that are his custody. Except you first bind him. So if you are to win a soul, that's why prayer and warfare, intercessory prayer and warfare, you can't do without it in a real soul winning level. You have to bind. You have to call upon heaven to come and also touch the souls and bind the devil that is holding the souls. And then you now talk to them and draw them. So, when you are doing that, the devil will not be looking at you. He will be planning and plotting on what to do to you. So, there is a battle. Ministry is a, a, the highest form of battle. And let me say this. Whatever you are doing is a ministry. As long as it is the Lord that called you into it. It is not only poopy that is a ministry. There is also a marketplace apostleship. So, if you are called to be a businessman or any kind of business, that is your ministry. You must realize that this is your ministry. If you are called to be in government office or you are working you know, anywhere and you are sure that this is what God has called you to, that is your ministry. You have to be take it as a ministry and do your best there. And when you are doing that, you will see enemies. You will see the devil fighting you. Paul was writing to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. He said, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, that by the prophecies that went ahead of you, that you will war a good warfare. 1 Timothy 1 18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, that by the prophecies that went ahead of you, that you will wage a war a good warfare. Then in verse 19, he says, Holding faith and good conscience, which some people, having neglected, has made a shipwreck of their faith. And he gave an example of Himenus and all of that. So, and in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, he said, Fight the good fight of faith. 
lay hold on eternal life fight is a fight it, like, see life and ministry is a war that is why we are looking at winning your battles by divine guidance listen you will conquer internal enemies fear you will conquer internal enemies laziness you will conquer internal enemies small heart limitation of capacity and then you move out you say i'm going to buy elsa i mean i'm going to buy elsa to win souls and make disciples now listen you have to be ready as soon as you are moving towards by you must pray and fight you must also get to buy and bind the prince of buy because prince, princes of buy powers there they will want to fight you are you getting it so when you are adventuring into ministry into labor you must be ready to fight some contract that you are bidding to win as a businessman listen there is a battle there are forces saying you will not win this contract. They will go and manipulate the heart of the people over the night as they are sleeping. There are witchcraft powers. There are occultic powers. Some of the people that you are building the contract with, they do their best to get all forms of powers to work against you. So we we'll try to make sure that you don't come for the, the day you are supposed to defend the, 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 the contract you are presenting. To make sure that you, you don't come that day. So you must be ready to fight. Life is a warfare. Ministry is a greater warfare. If we must win the battle, battles against the adversary, against the forces, the powers that are fighting against our progress. Some of them are from the ancestry. I mean, there are ancestral spirits that your forefathers worshipped. And your forefathers handed you over to them. And they believe that you should come and serve them. And now you rose up and say, I'm not going to serve you. They say, you are not going to serve us. We are going to face you with battle. And so you have to be ready to bind them. Fight them. There are idols in your town, forces, that are saying, if this man rises up, he will deal with us. So let us deal with him. Finish him. Bring him down before he rises up. These, there are battles from the village. There are battles in the city. There are territorial battles. Listen. There are battles in the place of work, in the, in the front where you are laboring. Everywhere battle. For us to win the battle, it must be by divine guidance. Divine guidance. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you in the way you should go. And I will guide you. I will teach you. And guide you. Let's read it. There are three things there. I will instruct, I will teach, and I will guide. Very important. Psalm 32 verse 8. God has made a promise to guide us. In life and in ministry so we must lay hold of his promises to ensure that we get the necessary guidance from him as we journey in life Psalm 32 verse 8 I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go I will guide thee with my eye this is quite interesting God is making a solemn promise to his people I will instruct you. I will give you instruction. I will not just instruct you. I will also teach you. I will give you details in the way you should go about that business. There are instructions concerning that business. There are teachings you need to sit down. That's why we ask us to go for set apart. Take time to go for set apart. You say you want to get married. Listen. God said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you will go about this marriage. If you don't go for set apart, even if you say, I had this is my wife, have you said, sat down and said, God, or this is my husband? Say, God, tell me something about this marriage. I want to know the way to go. Who is this man? I want to know him. Who, he, who is he before you? I will instruct and teach thee. Instruction is different from teaching. Instruction is, Brochim Obi, go this way, do it this way. And then you now say, Lord, how do I do it? You say, I should go to Onecha. And win souls for you. How? That is where teaching comes in now. He will now start telling you, the first thing you are going to do is to fast and pray seven days eh, for that city and bind the prince of the city. And then when you get there, the first thing to do is to locate a particular church. He may even tell you the name of the church or give you a vision and teach you from the vision. I will instruct and teach you on how to go about that business. The business you are about to do, many people are doing it. Are you hearing me? Yes. There are a lot of competition everywhere.
things what you are thinking about now let me tell you maybe many people are thinking about the same thing so there are a lot of people that are doing the same thing but how do you get the unique wisdom to excel the bible says, and solomon's wisdom excelled above every other wise man on earth he mentioned some wise men of the east and said solomon became the wisest on earth in his own generation he excelled he excelled how do i go about this and then when he finished teaching you and instructing you he say i will guide you guiding is or follow me lord moses said to god if your presence does not go with us do not take us away from here. So he will guide you with his presence. He will guide you with him, you know, his own power, leading you into what he has taught you to do. And when you are doing it, you will see him. Yes, Lord, this is what you told me when I was praying. This is, yes, he said, yes, that's what is happening now. Are you getting it? And then he said in verse 9 Do not be like a horse or a moon which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with beat and bridle lest they come near you that's what many believers are like eh they will just they will not ask god they will not seek god they will just be so god will just be using all kinds of experience bad experiences sorrowful experiences to teach look at it verse 10 he said many sorrows shall be to the wicked many sorrows not few sorrows the wicked there is not talking about unbelievers the wicked is anyone who is not following god who is not following god that person is a wicked person read your bible carefully isaiah chapter 55 what did he say verse uh, from verse um, 8 he said seek the lord why he will be fine call upon him why he is near he said let the wicked man forsake his thoughts and the unrighteous man his ways let the wicked forsake his sin. I say, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So anytime you are thinking your thoughts, doing your own thing, before God, you are regarded as a wicked. As a wicked. As long as you are not following the Lord. Because that weak way is a wicked way. That's why he said, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. But the end of it is death. A way that leads to death is not a wicked way. Amen. Now in Isaiah 30 verse 21 he said your ear shall hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it talking about significant i mean clarity in divine guidance and in proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 he said trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own what that is where our problem comes from we thought we are wise we thought we can de design it and go into it without praying and asking him trust in the lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding don't say this is the way this person did it and succeeded let me do it i will succeed no don't say this is you know the place where this person went and succeeded i will go there and succeed no do not lean on your own understanding you say in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path when you acknowledge him it will direct if you fail to acknowledge him it will not direct that is very very clear david won all the battles david did, he did not lose any battle listen david fought the greatest battle of all times but he died in peace he didn't die by war are you getting me oh my god lift up your right hand say after me father i will fight all the battles of my life i will fight all the battles of my ministry by your own guidance i will win them all and i will die in peace i will not die in battle i will not be carried away by battle as you helped david so you will help me in the name of jesus yes he fought more battles than Saul. he fought more battles than all the people Saul died by battle he fought more battle than ahab ahab died by battle this man fought and fought and fought and yet he didn't lose anyone he didn't die by anyone are you getting me there was no battle that david went to and lost any of them apart from one that one he was one that wanted the thing to be lost in the year that kings go to battle he sat at home that was where he how he fell into adultery 
Are you getting it? And then, in trying to cover the adultery, he now sent a letter to Joab, the commander, and said, by the hand of uh, Uriah, and say, uh, put Uriah in front of the battle and become, tell the people to become weak. Uh, there's a way he, he arranged that thing. He said, put weak people around him so that, and that was the, the only battle it was said that they lost some, some soldiers in trying to protect and, you know, you know, cover his sin. That was why God had to punish and discipline him. But every other battle, he, right from when he was running away from Saul, in 1 Samuel 23, when he was, you know, with his, um, let me call them disciples, in the wilderness, Philistines came against Keilah, 1 Samuel 23, 1 to 12. And he, 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 he out of passion, he, he, he has to go for that war. But before you, he, he, he said, Lord, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah. They are robbing the treasure floor. They are destroying lives. Do I stay here and wait and see this happen? He was not even caring that Saul was after his life. Passion to save God's people. And God said, go, I will save Keilah through your hand. And his people said, Oga, we are afraid here in Judah. And you want to carry us to battle? What if Saul come against us as we are fighting? What do you think? <laughs> he went back again and asked the Lord again. The Lord said, go, for I will deliver Keilah into your hand. And that was how he went for that battle and won. He went and won. Another battle that he would have lost was the battle, you know, if you read First Samuel 27 verse 1. Very, very striking scripture. I wish we have time to read it. First Samuel 27 verse 1. You see, we are, you know, <laughs> David began to think like a human being. I think it's Second Samuel. No, it's First Samuel 27 verse 1. He said, I will, I will perish one day in the hand of this son. What is good for me now? Eh? Look at it. David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me anymore in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. He didn't ask God here. Are you following me? That Saul has been pursuing him, pursuing him, pursuing him. Two times he would have, Saul would have killed him, but God delivered him. Narrow escape. In those two occasions, he has to collect something from Saul, Peter, and whatever. So in a, 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 a case, a particular scenario, he caught the garment of Saul while they are sleeping. Heavy sleep from God came upon them. All the soldiers were snoring. He came around, you know. God was fighting for him. But at a time, he became so much afraid. Fear. You know what? He didn't pray again. He didn't inquire of the Lord again. Any time you fail to inquire of the Lord, you run into a problem. He said in his heart, not that God told him. David said in his heart, there is nothing better for me. Eh? <laughs> are you getting me? You are now thinking that there is nothing better for me than to go to Abuja and join my uncle in that business. Eh? There is nothing better for me than to you know, start my master's now. Listen, have you prayed? Is it God that is leading you? How can you say that there is nothing better for you? Have you asked the Lord? He didn't ask God. This is the moment he joined the Philistines. Are you getting me? That was how the Amalekites raided his uh, Ziklag dwelling. By the time he came out of this journey, the whole city and their properties, everything has been burned down. He was just by mercy managed to save his wife and his children and others as he asked the Lord, oh, because that one was stayed by, are you getting it? By divine guidance in chapter 30. When they cry, 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 he now knew that crying cannot save me. Listen, crying will not save you. You just need to inquire of the Lord. He said to Abiata, get me the effort. Get me the effort. And the Abiata got him the effort. He inquired of the Lord and said, shall I pursue? Shall I recover? Shall I? God said, pursue for you shall recover all. And by all means, you shall overtake. And by every means, recover all. And that was how he went in that journey and recovered all. The moment he was made a king, the whole king of Israel, the Philistines gathered in 2 Samuel chapter 5. 
from verse 17 to 25. They gathered to fight him, to catch him because they were like, this boy, 13 years ago, he killed our captain. Now he's the, the, the king. Ah, ah. Let's capture him on time before... Oh my God. I remember what happened the moment I, I, I answered call for full-time ministry. The moment I resigned my job and answered full-time ministry call. Go to, going to two years now. Listen. The devil came to kill me. That's the way to summarize what, what went... What, you know, I just noticed that this is a battle for my physical life. It was, I have to ra run to my disciple and say, what is happening here? <laughs> and it, he just encouraged me and prayed for me. And then we continued the battle. He, after meeting him, the battle did not end. The only thing I got from him was that he strengthened my heart. That fellowship with him, when I shared with him, what the devil is, he, he said, don't be afraid. Go and face the battle. You will win. Thank God for such a, a strengthening from him. Otherwise, just like David, I, when that was happening, I remembered what David passed through. I said, wow. So you want to kill me, devil? So that they say he resigned from job and died. <laughs> oh, God. I said, this is serious. The devil, the Philistines came against David. They came to take away his life. The Bible says he went and, and hid in the hold. And then he asked the Lord, should I go and fight them? God said, go and fight them. He went and fought them and he conquered. They came again. When they came again, he didn't say, God told me to fight them before. And they, go and read your Bible. I don't have time because that's not where we are going. He fought them again and won again by divine guidance. Because God told him the second time, this time around, just ensure that you see a, a movement, a, a sound of a going on the mulberry tree. When you hear that sound, that is when you are going to move because it is at that spot that you will know that the Lord has gone ahead of you to disarm them. The strategy for the second battle was different from the strategy of the first battle. Every battle is unique. If you are going to win each of them, you must get fresh instruction from God winning battles by divine guidance please take note of what we are sharing today because i told us as the lord was guiding 21 days of glory the first seven days he dealt on the subject of glory the second seven days he was dealing on divine guidance this is the end of it today is the the, the climax so pay attention to what god is talking about today winning battles by divine guidance now where we are going is the battle of inheritance when God called Joshua and said, you are going to lead these people to inherit their inheritance. This year we have just entered, 2024 ministerial year, is unique. This morning when I was praying, the Lord began to open my eyes. I will share it with you people after now. He began to open my eyes to the things that he wants to do. I said, wow. I was, I was excited. I said, in fact, I, I, I was telling the Holy Ghost, I, I, I wish you are physical so that I can, give, I, I can hug you. I was just hugging the air. I said, Holy Ghost, I want to... Uh, hi! The, 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 the revelation was much. The, I said, Holy Ghost, where are you? I want to hug you. It was, I said, I love you, Holy Ghost. What an, an, a direction. Listen, as I'm getting excited, he said... You can only win the battles because there are battles around the things that you are hearing by divine guidance. I will instruct and teach you in the way you should go. And then I will guide you with my eye. I will guide you. I will take you by the hand and be guiding you there. I decree that somebody, you that is following me, listening to me this morning, all the battles in this ministerial year, you will win them by divine guidance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Joshua chapter 5 verse 13. As Joshua, they were at the, at the edge of Jericho. About to fight Jericho. He had a strange encounter with the Lord. The Lord of the hosts. Joshua chapter 5 from verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho. That he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold... There stood a man over and against him. Over and against him with his sword drawn in his hand. 
And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as, as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from all thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Are, are, you, are you following this story? The, the, the captain of the, the host of the Lord, that is the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, this is the Holy Ghost. He is the Lord of harvest. He is the executor of God's activity on the earth. When God said, let there be light, there is someone that executes light on the earth. Are you getting me? That's why God, before he will speak, the spirit of the Lord must be moving upon the face of the deep. Before he speak, are you getting it? Are you following me? Because when he said, let there be light, somebody will be there to do what? Cause light to happen. So before the battle began, the captain of the Lord of hosts was there. Are you getting me now? That's the Holy Ghost. If you check the book of Acts, you notice that even Jesus was saying, please, eh? he, until he comes, this job will not succeed. Though. It will not work. At a time, he said to the disciples, the reason why I came to the earth to die is so that I will go back and release him. Because that is the only way the work of the Lord on earth will succeed. By the Holy Ghost. By the Spirit of the Lord. Are, are you getting it? He says to them, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, he will not come. This, he, he need to come. So he, he came here because the people of God was about to face battle. Listen, don't ignore the Holy Ghost. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Joshua asked him, are you for us or against us? <laughs> he said, neither. I'm not for you. I'm not against you. I'm a captain. You know, if he had said, I am for you, Joshua would have said, oh yeah, join the army. <laughs> if he said, I'm against you, Joshua would say, oh yeah, let's fight now. Say, I'm not against you. I'm not for you. I am the Lord. When he said, I am the captain. Ah, Joshua fell on his face. He understood. He surrendered. He now asked, what do you want me to do? He said, the first thing to do is to remove your shoe. Eh? Remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. A soldier is known by his shoe. All your experiences, remove them. Are you getting me? Yes. Remove your shoe. Surrender. Let me guide you. That's why I came. As the captain of the Lord of the army of the, of the Lord of hosts, I have now come. Now, there is now. They read the Bible. I have now come. Eh? I have now. There is a battle now. I came for it. And in the next chapter, he began to, he began to guide. Chapter 6. He said to Joshua, verse 2. Joshua 6, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, the Lord of hosts that came, the captain, he said to Joshua, See, I have given unto thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor, and you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horn, and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. <laughs> you know, this is the technology. There's no, there's no way Joshua by his thinking we come ac across this technology. Jericho was a city walled up. You can't enter. In fact, when they saw them coming, they were laughing. They said, these people, 
with our security with this city this world the the the, the boasting of jericho people is their wall because the wall is so strong that it, it will take the hand of god to pull it down they built it so powerfully and so they were so secured and of course joshua must have been thinking in his mind how do we enter this city how do we go about this but god has a solution what god said to joshua to do the guidance that he gave him on how to win the battle against jericho is not looking like is not looking you know reasonable that's why i said do not lean on your own understanding don't use your mind to shake what god is asking you to do just do it because when you do it he will come and do the thing tell me if it is the shout of the people that fall down the wall no he moved in the shout of the people so that it will be as if it is a shout. <laughs> are you getting me? Oh, you are not getting me. He moved in the shout of the people. As they began to shout. You know, the trumpet is so that the people will be able to shout in unison. So when you hear the sound of the trumpet, everybody should shout. And the wall will fall down. So don't make mistake that it is the shout that fell the wall. It is the captain. When they shouted, the captain moved winning our battles whether life ministry is by our cooperation with the lord it is the lord we we do something he will now do the main thing are you getting it but before he will come to do his own you must follow him you must follow him it's not by you know trobon trobon no it's not by trial and error you must be sure that you hate god you don't dive into things because you think it will work you believe that you had God when well, you are not sure. Excuse me, it is risky. Listen, for the Lord to move in the shout of his people and crash the wall of Jericho, it must be by instruction. So we must get his instruction. When they won the battle against Jericho, they face the battle against Ai in chapter 7. If you read verse 2, you see what happened. And Josh, chapter 7, verse 2, and Joshua sent men from jericho to ai which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them saying go up and view the country and the men went up and viewed ai and they returned to joshua and said unto him let not all the people go up but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite ai and make not all the people to labor there for they are but few so they went there so there there went up there of the people about three thousand men about they are not even sure of the number when the critical thing about battle is numbering the people numbering the army you must be sure of the number so they keep saying about two or three thousand and they also they, they, <laughs> about three thousand went and what happened and they fled before the men of ai and the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the heart of the people melted and became as water. Why? What is happening here? Joshua, instead of asking the Lord, the Lord is there, he has come. Instead of saying to the Lord, Thank you for the victory over Jericho. We are facing AI. How do we go about it? He listened to the recommendation of the people. Anytime a leader began to begin to listen to the people's complaint, uh, you are not closing on time, uh, you are not uh, considering uh, that we are coming from far and all of that, and you begin to, oh my God, you better go to God. You better get the blueprint of what he asked you to do from him. Are you getting me? God may want you to run six hours meeting as a stretch, at a stretch weekly. And you want to copy people that are doing two hours. This is how we fail in ministry. Because we want to do it the way other people are doing it. We want to go the way we are seeing. Eh? The people recommended and said, the people are few. They are looking at AI. Truly, they are few. But you think that they are few and they are weak. That's the problem. Do you know that when God was asking Joshua after they failed in chapter, uh, chapter 8 
God was now asking Joshua to go and fight Ai. The instruction that he gave him was so serious. Look at chapter 8 verse 1. And the Lord said to Joshua, fear not, because fear has gripped the heart of the man of God. So the first thing God has to address in the heart of Joshua is what? Fear. Fear not. Fear not. They conquered you before because you went on your own. You lost the business you invested in last year because you didn't pray about it before you put God's money there because the money is not even your own. You didn't, you didn't ask God to direct you. Now, another business investment is coming and you are afraid. Should I invest? I know I lost last year. God is saying, fear not, but ensure that you are guided by him. Fear not. Neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of the world with you. What was the recommendation of the people? About two or three thousand. And what is God's recommendation now? All the people of the world. Ah uh ah. -uh. For small AI, <laughs> I guess that AI may be around one thousand. So they say if two thousand fight one thousand, they should be able to overcome them. <laughs> Uh, so about two or three thousand can handle this one thousand people but god said there are one thousand but i don't know how many army until i read when joshua was sending an ambush the bible said he selected thirty thousand men choice worry men thirty thousand and sent them to go and lie in ambush between Bethel and ai thirty thousand are you getting me then the rest, which must be much more than the... You know, when you read the book of Numbers, when they were numbering the army, you will notice that the army of Israel, they are more, at least they are more than 200,000 army. They are more than 200,000. I'm sure of that one. Are you getting it now? Now, you can see how all of them, God said all of them shall be mobilized. When you hear from God, you will not lose a battle. Take all the people of the world with you and arise Go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou did unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey unto yourself. Then he says something that I underlined. He said, Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it strategy for this particular town is small but first of all all the men of the world will go and you can only win these people by ambush you know what ambush is they will know that you are already in the in the front and you are also at the back so you go to their back and you stand there with your army and then you come in the front so they will be fighting you in the front and then those at the back will come up so that you know they will not look back and, so, and notice that the battle is in the front and in the back god said that is the only way the people are too strong small but mighty small but strong you cannot win these people god is the one talking you know he knows all things ah you can't win these people except by ambush brothers and sisters listen i want to tell us the truth life and the battles thereof can only be won by divine guidance. Make no mistake about it. Many of us are suffering. Look at what Psalm 32 verse 10 says. It says, many sorrows, many sorrows, many sorrows. You invest, you lost, sorrow. You enter into that business, you fail, sorrow. At the time you get frustrated, sorrow. When you fail to follow the Lord, you will enter, you will go and locate your business somewhere. After one year, you run down to zero because it's not God that asks you to locate it there. The business is by God, but location wrong. You will suffer sorrow. Your life will go backward because you did not follow divine guidance. Every price that must be paid, are you listening to me? To get guidance from God must be paid, and it is worth paying. If it is dry fast and fast it get it because when you get it and follow it success is sure victory is sure but when you are taking life carelessly 
uh, let me try this job i don't know whether uh, it will work let me go and apply uh, i don't know whether it will work let me start teaching in primary school then as i'm waiting for uh, a, a better job and, and you just that's how believers suffer many believers are suffering today some that moved out of the will of god and got into something big they are there to, the, to their own destruction many of them have lost their faith they are no longer standing the only way open and available for believers is by divine guidance as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god you can only win this battle god is saying to joshua by ambush and all the men of the war must be at war for a small town this is serious brothers and sisters that's how they won the battle against ai then the next thing you see in chapter 9 look at it, it's very interesting that's where i'm going to stop now chapter 9 verse 1 he said and it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coast of the great sea over against lebanon the hittites and the amorites the canaanites the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites head thereof please read together with me verse 2 one to go that they gather themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. Listen, that you won one battle does not mean that other people will go and sleep. When they hear that you have conquered Enugu, all the demons and principalities in Southeast, they will say, they will unite together to come and fight you. Are you getting me? That you succeeded in a particular business. Don't think that you are going to succeed in this one except by guidance because by the time you succeeded all the agents of darkness in that business line they will gather together and say what are, what is happening here how can this young man came here just yesterday and is one that is now selling more than us listen as you are succeeding as you are succeeding be careful because success attracts enemies attracts more battles what did i say now success victory attracts more serious battle look at it all the kings and he was mentioning them one after the other they all gathered with one accord they say let's unite our forces together before this man because he's, he's, he's advancing he has conquered you know enugu and now he's trying to take over southeast before if we don't do something we take over nigeria and then africa before he get to nigeria let all the demons in other geopolitical zone gather and face him now battle more battles are attracted by success and victory get ready for battles we don't fear battle god said i have given them to your hand so arise and fight does it not interest you that the way we get into our inheritance is by battle so you must love battle are you hearing me you must be excited at spiritual warfare because by by warfare we inherit our inheritance. You must destroy the devil and his works before you enter your inheritance, before you fulfill your ministry. Fulfillment of your purpose in life must be by battles, and you must win them by divine guidance. Look at this that happened. And when the inhabitants of Gibbon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work willingly. And went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent, and bound up, and old shoes, and clouted upon their feet, and old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moody. The story is long, but you know what happened here? They came as if they came from a far country. And they told Joshua and the elders of Israel, we came from a far country. You can see that everything we carry is old and dusty. Eh? Please, we want you people to make peace with us. Eh? Enter into agreement with us so that you will not kill us. <laughs> oh, look at what happened in verse um, 9. Okay, verse 14. Verse 14. And, and the men took of their visuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the lord and joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live and the princes of the congregation swear unto them 
And it came to pass at the end of three days, after they had met a league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors and that, and that they had dwelt among them. After three days, you discover that that business that you invested was a scam. Eh? When the person that is trying to introduce you into the business is coming, he'll be telling you that this business, in fact, I've been in it for seven years. In fact, I have done everything. And then you invest. After three days, after one month, the Bible said they did not ask counsel of the Lord. They made peace. They entered into association with people they are supposed to destroy and take possession of. You know, you know what has happened? They have limited their, their inheritance. They have limited, you know, how far God can take them by wrong, I mean, not following divine guidance. This is very dangerous. And this is very serious. This morning as we pray, brothers and sisters, men are corny. Look at the corniness of men. This one is not even the devil. The devil we people that you'll be dealing with. Some people will come and say, yes, the Lord has called me uh, to join you uh, in this business and all of that. But <clears throat> you need to ask God, who is this person? He may be a spy coming to spy you out. He may be an enemy in disguise as if he's a friend who, has, who was sent by the enemy to destroy you. That is why you can't succeed. I, I wish you can write it down with your name. I can't succeed except by divine guidance. Take it or leave it. Go and ask all those who have succeeded in life and in ministry. They are men and women that followed God. Not day by day. I mean, moment by moment. Asking him about everything. And not taking a step until they hear him. This morning... Many of us have experienced setback, sorrow, in the things we have been doing before now. Because you have not been asking the Lord. Somebody was sharing with me yesterday. The, the, the way his life has become so backward. So backward. Because he was not following the, the spirit. He has been trying life by trial and error. Yet he's a believer. Yet he's a child of God. But... What was the missing link? This matter of not fully. He said to me that he now came to realize that the life in the Bible, in the book of us, is possible if we really follow the Spirit. It's possible for us to have the same result. I mean, we can preach and 3,000 repent in one, one preaching. And if we will become followers of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, we need to pray. Please rise on your feet and begin to talk to the Lord.